Rail travel began in Britain more than 200 years ago. Grand stations like this one were the starting point for countless romantic adventures on the great steam trains of a bygone age. The trains have changed, but the sense of adventure remains. Europe has some of the world's most exciting, varied and historic holiday destinations and what better way to see them in comfort than by train. I'm at London's St Pancras, the gateway to our European voyage of discovery. And it starts here, aboard a Paris-bound train, as I begin my 1,200-mile journey to the eternal city, Rome. I'm one of the five and a half million passengers whose journeys are organised by Rail Europe every year. European geography is complex, uh, they come from all over the world. So sometimes what we do for them is that we simplify the journey. We, we took all the hassle off by giving them interactive maps, explaining the, the products that they should take. So basically this is our role, just to uh, make them journey uh, unforgettable. The company has been guiding passengers across the continent in style for more than 80 years. Today, they have access to rail products from more than 50 European train companies. We've established a local footprint in all of the countries where we operate. We have lots of staff in the US, but we have also smaller teams around the world uh, who have this intimate knowledge of the market. If you want to travel like the Europeans do, and if you want to make the most of your trip, uh, rail is the, um, is, is the way to go. And we really enhance that in the way we speak to our trade or our direct customers. Less than two and a half hours after leaving London, I'm in Paris. Helpfully, Rail Europe service goes beyond the station. They can arrange metro cards and tours as well. Day two, and there's just time to enjoy breakfast at Gare de Lyon before my journey to Switzerland. This train passes through some absolutely stunning scenery and it's the best way to see it with the panoramic windows. It also reaches remote parts of the country that the road simply can't reach. And unlike other modes of transport, there's plenty of space here for passengers and for luggage. I end the day in beautiful Montreux. The bustle of Paris seems a world away. Hard to believe I was there only this morning. Day three and I'm heading to Rome via Milan, Bologna and Venice. My connections are seamless, but if I had been delayed, I could have easily caught the next train. They're so frequent. It's one of the reasons European rail travel is so popular with business customers. When you have meetings that take a bit longer than expected or that are finished earlier than expected, then you just hop on the next train that's available if you don't have a seat reservation and you go where you need to go. And alongside the business traveller, you're just as likely to find holidaying couples, families and backpackers. To travel by train, it's more comfortable for the children. If we are traveling by car, it's, you know, narrow and, you know, small place, but here they can move, they can go and buy, you know, a meal. I'm backpacking and the train is the best way to travel because it's very cheap and easy. It's very easy to get connected and to add one more thing to your schedule. No matter what kind of traveller you are, one of the best things about going by rail is that the train leaves you right in the centre of the city, like here in beautiful Venice. No need for lengthy transfers, you can just get on with the sightseeing. And rail travel minimises the environmental impact on these historic places. Electric trains are far less polluting than large boats, planes and cars. One of the things I've loved most about this journey is that I haven't actually felt like a tourist. Right from the start, I've been travelling with the locals, and that's as memorable a part of the experience as seeing the countryside and the famous sights. My last train takes me right across Italy, from sea to sea, Adriatic to Mediterranean, towards the Roman sunset. They say Rome wasn't built in a day, but with Rail Europe's help, that's roughly as long as it takes to get there.